uh, it is it's good to see you both I am so so sorry for your loss and the circumstances we have to check in with how are you both doing one minute at a time uh, one breath at a time but you know the outpouring unexpected of support and parents that are just like us and gone through the same thing has been overwhelming and really um, helpful but also heartbreaking why don't you just tell us what happened um you know he we it was super bowl sunday he asked his dad for a cheeseburger you know ate it or was delivered it to his room while he was playing his little video games and talked to his dad for a minute and an hour later i went up to talk to him because he wanted to talk he had told me earlier he wanted to talk about an internship for the summer and i found him on the floor, non-responsive. And Sam started CPR while I called the ambulance and the um, the uh, paramedics tried for 30 minutes to revive him and weren't able. Oh, and this is so recent. This just happened Sunday. I'm, I'm assuming you all want to talk because of you found this chain of events that he got access to these drugs through Snapchat. I know, I would have never, I mean, I thought the worst thing that could happen on Snapchat were like nude pictures or saying something really inappropriate or something like that. And I, we would talk incessantly to them about that. And during the lockdown, especially here, you know, now that we're in LA, um, we were a little, we let them be on those things more because it was the only way they could connect with their peers. And um, I had no idea that there were drug dealers on there. And it's... Yeah, that he thought he was getting Xanax. It was laced with fentanyl, which is m much stronger, of course. Um, what does the DEA say about this? Is this something that happens frequently? Yes, this is uh, a leading cause of death of homeless people around the nation. Um, if you touched fentanyl with your finger, that's enough to kill you. Mm. And um, these things are being assembled in labs in Mexico and then ferried across the border and dumped into our cities. And we had no idea that Snapchat was a way that fentanyl could get to our child sitting upstairs in our home. But a dealer who delivers reached out, colorful menu, kids channel, and found a bunch of kids. In fact, we were contacted by a 14-year-old's mother who's in the hospital right now here and saw the same menu. Oh, it is just heartbreaking. We're looking at pictures of your son. I, you know, you want to reach to the TV and give you guys a hug because it's so awful. Maybe you can tell us what Sammy was like and what you want people to know about him. He was an amazing kid you know his teachers would always tell me he was one of the smartest ones in the room he got great grades he had huge dreams he was unbelievably sweet and funny and uh full of intellectual curiosity always had some project he was doing he made like this self-sustaining biosphere in his room over the pandemic pandemic and he was investigating entrepreneurship and stocks all the time and um he, he was an amazing boy and so careful about his health, too. And, um, you know, fentanyl is twice as addictive as heroin, and it only takes, what, two milligrams to overdose, you know, even probably less in a little, you know, a younger person's body who can't mm -hmm. handle it. And, and um, he was also a football player and had been stuck inside in front of a computer screen for a year because right. of COVID. Yeah. So when these social media platforms do the wrong thing and the COVID-19 pandemic puts a multiplier on it. And so, that's so, what we're all dealing yeah. with at this very moment. So the social media companies are, are good at insulating themselves legally from these situations, but then there's the moral ethical question. What do you think uh, should change about these social media companies in terms of government intervention or new laws? Or, and maybe there's technological, I don't know if there's anything you can do. Well, there is. I mean, Snapchat is designed as the dark web for children. The uh, screen dissolves after you put it out there, and that's why the children choose it. So it's inviting bullying. It's inviting this sort of behavior for drug dealers, um, sexting. All of the things that we don't want our kids to be doing is why they're attracted 
And we all, as parents, are playing the chess game in our minds and realizing that this is the exact wrong place. So what they need to do is get on parents' team, give us access to our children's snaps, not make them dissolve. And they need to cooperate with law enforcement when a son like ours passes yeah. away. The Santa Monica police tell us they don't even bother calling anymore because mm. Snapchat and Twitter, there was a Twitter handle at the bottom of the menu. Uh, all they'll do is take a profile down and they won't help the local police find the person or say what's in the profile. Well, it's just so alarming. Anyone with a with a child or a teenage uh, child hears this story, and it's unbelievable. And you guys speaking out so soon after this happened shows how passionate you are about getting this change. So we so appreciate you both joining us, and we wish you all the best. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Laura. Thanks.